G'day, I'm Drew from Gringo Productions, and today we're going to be looking at how to do some basic tracking in DaVinci Resolve. So we have our image here. First of all, we're going to be changing the color of the object. Then we're going to be tracking the object. So all I've done with this object is I've put a basic LUT on it. It's a LUT that I made for the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. It's not the LUT end or LUTs. I mean, no LUT is. You'll be able to download the LUT and this footage from my website, the link below. If you don't know how to use a LUT, all you got to do, let's say, I'll start that again come to your LUT section up the top here and then go down and drag it across or you can of course go to right click LUTs and then find the LUT simple as that so today what are we doing we are changing the color of this Fuji roll film so there's a number of ways to do this you can do this using the qualifier or you can do it in your curves with hue versus hue so let's try and do the easy way first and do hue versus hue. With your picker selected, if it's not selected, come down here and select qualifier. And then pick your part. So it's green, obviously, tell by here. So that's the area of color we are going to change. So let's expand it out a little bit. Take these other ones out, take them out, you just right click them. And it's the middle one you're going to be moving. So. We make our selection, as you can see, we can change to any color we want. So we're not going to change it to green. So let's say we're going to change it to pink. So here we have our image. It's very blotchy. It looks kind of terrible. So that's no good. We're not going to use that. There's no point. Okay. So let's get rid of that with this little button here. And let's use a qualifier. So let's make a new node anyway. Alt S. So let's click the area of the color we want to change. So in this case, it's green. And then Shift H will bring up your highlights. Or you can always come up here and go to View, Highlight, Highlight. But it's better to learn shortcuts. It makes everything a lot quicker and makes you look more professional when really you're just doing shortcuts. So let's widen it out. By widening it out, you are creating more color for DaVinci Resolve to pick up on. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. Now let's go to saturation and increase that a bit and bring some of those blacks down. But we still have this kind of area we need to fix. If we press Shift H and find where that area is, so it's this area here, that's in our dark areas. Let's go down to the luminance and bring some of those blacks down. So there we go, that looks pretty good. We just want to change the green, we just, so don't worry about the white. Okay, now, if we were to change it to pink again, as you can see, it is a much better selection, but we have a little bit of dancing noise. So let's go across to our matte finesse, which is a very fancy name, and let's blur it right out. Smashes everything together. And then let's use our clean whites, which fills in the gaps. And then let's go to our clean blacks. Okay, now let's have a look. So as you can see, it is a much better selection. We still have a bit of dancing noise. So let's go back to our blur and blur it right out. And Let's just clean it up even a bit more. Okay, so great. That's it, right? Tutorial's finished. We can all go home. Well, what happens if another object were to come into the frame? Now we need to make a power window around this one here. So come across to your power windows and let's select the circle. And then let's put it over here and let's make it a bit smaller to make it easier for ourselves. Okay, so now we have this power window. So we have this object selected and not this object. Everything is good, right? But then what would happen if someone came along and stole our film? So now we have to track our object. So come across to our tracker. And there's a couple of things you want to do before you start tracking. One is, and this is a major one that no one ever seems to point out, 
is turn off all your nodes in DaVinci Resolve. Alt D. So by turning off all the nodes, this will help your computer run a lot faster and make DaVinci Resolve run a lot quicker to track your object. So next thing we want to do is we want to turn off a couple of things. We don't need perspective 3D. We don't need rotate. And we don't need zoom because we're not zooming in or out. We'll keep tilt and pan because they're they always good together. You know, they're friends. Control T will start your track forward. And as you can see, it's tracking along very nicely. So here comes our hand. Okay, great. So it looks like it has tracked it perfectly. Um, we have nothing to worry about. Everything's good. Oh, now the hands come back and it looks like if we pause our track, that the track has actually stopped. Okay, so if we were to track backwards maybe, maybe that'll fix it. Alt T to track backwards. Okay, so hands taken it away. Okay, so sometimes the auto tracker just won't work the way it's supposed to work. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you want to do is get rid of all these track marks. So you come up to these three little dots, reset track data on active window. Alrighty, so now what we want to do is we want to track this by using the frame, not the clip. DaVinci Resolve automatically makes a key point. So let's skip ahead and find the part where we need to start keyframing. So about here is where we need to start. So you can either move your power window, which will make a keyframe, or you can come across down here and select it here. Now let's go ahead a little bit. Uh, maybe go back. You don't have to do every single keyframe. So here's a good point. And then we'll just go back a little bit until we find another good spot. Good. Radio. Now let's get it just before it leaves. And then forward about here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So let's look at our track. Looks okay. So if we put all the nodes back on, Alt D, see what it looks like. And as you can see, it gets a little lost here. So we'll just fix that. And then that looks good. So now we know that it's out of the picture. So let's go back to our last keyframe. So let's move the power window out altogether. It's always good to have it out just in case you're changing light and there's a weird light just sitting here. Go forward in time and find where it comes back in. So it looks like it comes back in about there. So move the power window up. And then go forward a little bit, say about there, and a bit more, and then that looks pretty good. So let's go back, see how our track looks, looks a bit wonky, and then let's see what that's like. So that looks good. Great, now we have tracked our object. So, everything is good. But, again, what would happen if the camera were to move? So, it's the exact same principle. Make a keyframe. Go ahead a little bit. We'll say about there and there. Maybe there. So how does that look? Not great. Let's go back to our first keyframe. And we'll go ahead a little bit. We're a little bit wonky. So let's go back. And let's find another good point. I think that looks okay. So let's start again. Looks okay. Looks okay. Alrighty. So let's go back to our last keyframe. And then let's just go forward. Alrighty, so let's get it when it's first coming in, which is obviously here. Again, just hitting space, 
to make it go forward and just adding those keyframes in. That looks good. Now the camera goes the other way. So again, the exact same thing. And probably need a little bit more keyframing. So it goes out. This is why you always want to take your power window out because now this power window is affecting this film. So let me get to our last keyframe, which is there. We want to be here. Cool. So again, same principle. Just going forward. So now let's look at it. Looks good. And then giant hand comes in and giant hand takes film away. Okay, so let's go to the edit page and then let's watch the clip. We'll speed it right up, say 340, doesn't really matter. We have our film, our second film. It's taken away, all good. Pull back in, still looks good. Pan, pan, film taken away. That's it. Okay, so that's how you do basic tracking in DaVinci Resolve. So just one thing I wanna show you before we finish, and I'm gonna do it in this clip. So holding Alt, I'm just gonna drag the clip, and I'm gonna make it really small, because we only need a little portion of this film. Go back to our color page. Okay, so next thing I'm going to show you is how to delete keyframes one at a time, but then in large groups. Okay, so let's again use the frame and make a keyframe. I'm going to make one here. And we're going to have it here. And we're going to go forward one frame. And we're going to put it here. And we're going to go forward another frame. And we're going to go back. So if we were to watch this through, we have a problem which obviously we created. When we get to this area, our power window is jumping. So we need to delete this keyframe here. If you want to zoom in a little bit closer, come down to this button here and just bring it in. This will make it a little bit easier for you to see the keyframe. And then come across to your keyframe just by clicking over it. Come to these three lines here and click delete keyframe. Now as you can see, it's deleted that keyframe and your power window is not moving anymore. Let's say you want to delete a whole bunch of keyframes. You don't have to come across and delete one by one because who wants to do that? That takes way too much time. So instead, you can select a whole bunch and then delete them that way. So come across to interactive mode and then make your selection and make sure it's closer to this keyframe than this keyframe or won't delete properly. Come across your three lines once again and then clear selected track data. And that will delete all the keyframes inside that box. So now you have a perfect keyframe. So that's the basics of tracking in DaVinci Resolve. Um, it's pretty simple. It's not like After Effects, which is insane. If you have any comments, leave them below. I'm more than happy to respond. I've been Drew from Gringo Productions. I hope you're staying safe and have a great day.